do I say? Yeah. Oh my God. God's talking. Okay. All right, so, uh, sorry. I'll talk more. Um, welcome to, this is a three-part workshop on using a compass. Uh, the next two parts are this meeting in February and then in March. So by then you'll probably be sick of me. But um, some of you haven't met me before. My name is Barb Brenner. Uh, I've been with the chapter, I'm going to date myself, since the late 80s. I used to count years, now I count decades. And I call them units, so it was only a couple of units ago. It doesn't sound as far. Um, I've been program chair, chapter chair, expo chair, and I've led many trips for the chapter. And I also at the expo, how many of you have been to the expo in June? Awesome. Um, if you haven't been to the expo in June, it's the second Saturday in June, and there's like 40 to 60 free workshops and display booths, and it's an awesome uh, event, and it's free. So I highly recommend to come to the ADK Outdoor Expo. It's held at Benton Ponds Park. And for the last several years, I've been doing a workshop on compass and uh, mapping compass and declination. And a lot of the volunteers from ADK have given me feedback that they'd love to come to the workshops at the expo. However, we're all volunteering for the expo. So we're kind of busy and we can't go to each other's workshops. So based on that, I volunteered to come to these three workshops um, to present the material. And I believe the slides that I'm going to show you tonight um, are up on the website. So if you go look for the announcement um, for tonight's workshop on the website, you should find a link that takes you to the slides. I do have a one-page cheat sheet I'll pass around. Hopefully there's enough for everybody. If not, you can leave me your email address and I can email you a copy of it. So um, how many degrees are in a circle? 360. So if you guys think about it, if you're standing at any particular point, you actually have 360 choices of direction to go in. The compass cannot tell you which way to go. But once you decide which way to go, the compass can help you stay on that path. And that's really what this is about, is having the compass help us stay on a path once we figure out what the path is that we want to be on. I have to set some boundaries around the presentation just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So the first boundary is that compass on the left is not the one we're talking about tonight. Lensatic type compass, I believe it's common in the military from what I've read about it. I've never actually used one like that. The compass we're focusing on tonight is the one on the right. I didn't know it was called the protractor compass until I looked it up. But I learned something getting ready for this presentation. And I think you'll see why it's called a protractor compass in just a little bit. The thing about that compass is it has um, two straight edges on the side. And that's going to come in handy uh, next month when we talk about using the compass with the map. It has a dial in the center. But even more important than the dial in the center, that dial needs to turn. So if you buy a compass that has a dial in the center and the dial doesn't turn, you're not going to be able to do what we need to do tonight. Now, you might say, well, why do they put a dial in the center with the 360 degrees around it if it doesn't turn? I've wondered the same thing. All I can figure is the same mold, but they just cut out one process in the manufacturing. That's, that's all I can guess. But I've had people come to the workshop with the dial, with the 360 degrees, and the dial doesn't move. So watch out for that $3 compass. So we need to have um, the base plate, which is that rectangular piece, key point are the two straight sides, and we need to have the dial that turns. Another uh, boundary about tonight's presentation is tonight's presentation is not about using the compass to find a bearing on a map. If that's what you're interested in, you're a month too early, because that's what we're doing in February. Okay, in February, we're going to have a map, we're going to use the compass with the map, and use it with true north. Tonight is about magnetic north. The other thing tonight is not about are these pictures on the bottom down here. 
And that is uh, the topic of declination, which always scares the heck out of everybody when they think about playing with the compass. So if you don't want to worry about declination, move to Chicago. Okay? In Chicago, the two norths line up, and there's no worry about declination. So if you need to go hiking in Chicago, I hear they have good pizza when you're done hiking. That's going to be the March workshop. We'll talk about declination in March. So tonight's going to be about magnetic north. Uh, February is going to be about true north. And March is going to be about working with both true north and magnetic north. How, how, we, how we deal with that. So tonight is about if you have a compass in your hand, I have to thank the expo committee because the expo chair bought this really cool compass. Can you guys see this? Do you remember what these are called? Isn't that cool? Anyway, tonight is about using a compass in your hand to look at something in the distance and say, I want to take a bearing to that. Or somebody gives you a bearing and you hold the compass in your hand and you want the compass to tell you which way to go. So think about tonight as you're holding the compass in your hand. You're not setting it on a map. Okay? That'll be in February. I just had to turn that on at least once. I wasn't positive I would have that tonight, so I wasn't totally prepared to, to use it, but we'll, we'll integrate it in for the presentation. So here's the agenda. First, we're going to talk about what a bearing is, because that's what we're going to be taking. And if we don't know what that is, how can we take it? So we'll find out what a bearing is. And then we'll talk about the parts of the compass that we need in order to take the bearing. And then we'll look at the detail of how to take a bearing and how to use a bearing. So to take a bearing is when you get the number, you find out what the number is. And to use a bearing means you have the number, and now you want to figure out which way you need to go. And then there's homework. I used to teach. Can you tell? And if we have time, I'll mention something called lateral drift, which is important. Homework's not great. I'm retired from all of that, and I refuse to ever grade again. I decide I like teaching, I like training, I do not like training. Does anybody know what that is? A protractor. Oops. Remember using one of these in school or maybe seeing them in school or whatever? So a protractor is a tool to measure an angle from 0 to 180. A protractor doesn't do the whole 360, it just goes from 0 to 180. And we're going to make use of that to talk about a bearing. So what is a bearing? A bearing is a measurement in degrees, that's our unit, degrees, from a baseline to some direction, some angle. In this case, the cyan is my direction of travel. That's where I want to go to. The red line is my baseline. So we line the baseline up at zero, and then we can measure our angle. Is that clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. So you measure from zero clockwise. And if you look at your compass, those of you who have one, either brought one or borrowed one, the degrees go clockwise. Right? Okay, so that's, that's just what a bearing is. It's a measurement of an angle. And if you remember taking a measurement of an angle using a protractor, we're just going to apply that knowledge to using the compass. So how do we measure a bearing? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to identify our baseline. Up here in the picture, my baseline is red. Hang on to that thought that we need a baseline. I'll apply that to what, where that is on the compass in just a moment. But just keep in mind that you need a baseline to start with. And of course, we have our direction of travel. That's that cyan line up there. And the guy's nose. The nose of the person, your nose and your direction of travel, have to be going in the same direction. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the protractor and line it up, putting the center point of it where those two lines intersect, and line it up with the baseline. So we're going to put the zero of the protractor on the baseline. So, so far we have a baseline that we need. We're going to take our protractor, the zero mark of the protractor, and line it up with the baseline. And then we're going to read clockwise the number of degrees. That seems simple, right? Does that make sense? Baseline, direction of travel, measure, clockwise. Do 
Did that just bring back bad memories of geometry class or something for some people? Okay, so the two key points to take away from this section of what a bearing is is one, the definition. A bearing is a measurement in degrees from a baseline. I'm going to say baseline about two million times during this presentation. It's very important. So we're going to take the measurement from the baseline to our direction of travel. Okay? So to measure a bearing, we need two things. We need a baseline and we need a protractor. So up there, that's cyan. So what's What's the colored cyan representing in my diagrams? Direction of travel, that's where I want to go. So I need a baseline. So guess what our baseline is? Does the little end give it away? Yeah, north is going to be our baseline. And then, so we need a baseline and we need a protractor. We need a way to measure it. Now we're going to talk about a compass. Guess what two things we need on the compass? A baseline and a protractor. So remember that, that's important. So let's talk about a compass. How many people in the room either brought or borrowed the compass tonight? So how many compasses do we have out there? Oh, you guys are good. You did your pre homework That's great. If you didn't, just look over your neighbor's shoulder or um, practice when you get home. Before we can talk about the parts of the compass, we should talk about holding a compass correctly. Because if you hold it incorrectly, that's called garbage in, garbage out. Okay? If you don't hold it correctly, it doesn't matter what number you get, it's not going to be right. So to hold the compass correctly, you want to have it pointing away from you. We're going to talk about the direction of travel on the compass in just a moment, but it's this arrow on the base plate, and you want that pointing away from you. A lot of you have completely rectangular ones. This one I'm holding here has a curved back, back edge. But if you have a straight back edge back here, that straight edge would be parallel with your shoulders. Direction of travel would be this little notch right there. There's probably an arrow on the base plate plane painted. So you want that pointing away from you. You want to hold it level in front of you, because if you don't hold it level, what doesn't act right? The magnetic needle, right? It needs to flow freely. And then the next thing is, oh, uh, keep it away from anything mag magnetic, like a watch. Or if you do this presentation at Menden Ponds Park, the bolts on the picnic tables are magnetic. Yeah, it really throws you off when you have 12 people sitting around taking a bearing with the compasses on the table, and all the compasses are pointing north in different directions. <laughs> that really makes you scratch your head. It's like, does this thing work? Okay, um, the top picture is the person holding the compass correctly, looking down on their head. The direction of travel arrow, which is that little arrow right there, is pointing away. This guy on the bottom, you can tell it's wrong because there's a big X on it and says wrong. Those are people over there with you, not to see it. Why is it wrong? Yeah, it's sideways. So the compass, the direction of travel is to that guy's right, but his nose is pointing straight ahead. I don't think he's going to walk like this, right? Um, what's wrong with that one? Yeah, it's same thing. It's not pointing in the direct, right direction of travel. And then this one, he's just playing backwards, right? So he's going to be... Uh, the direction of travel is pointing towards his nose. Try walking towards your nose. Okay, so make sure you hold it correctly. All right, so let's talk about how to use the compass to take a bearing. To do that, we need three arrows on the compass. There are three arrows on the compass. Can you find them? We've already talked about direction of travel. What's the other one? The needle. What's the third one? Yeah, the one that's painted on the bottom. Okay, I'll go through these one at a time. So the first one is the one that everybody knows about on the compass, and that's uh, the magnetic needle, the, the needle floating in the center. And this compass on the right, uh, the south is black and the north is red. That's my diagram that I'm going to use throughout my slides to represent the magnetic needle. 
Here are three more pictures because not every compass is the same. There's some differences. The one on your left um, has a white end for the south tail and red for north. Red, north is always red. But the tip of the arrow is um, fluorescent. It'll show up at night. The one in the middle has a white south end also. Um, notice the one in the middle, by the way, the base plate doesn't have a square front and back to it. It has a square left and right side, but not a square front and back. That works. And then the one over here on the right has uh, a black tail for south. Okay, so they just look slightly different, but they work the same. The orienting arrow is the one that's painted on the housing. So that, which is that dial. So if you turn that dial, the painted one turns. Okay? So if you have your compass, go ahead and turn in your dial, and you'll see the painted one turns. I'm going to represent that in my diagram as yellow. Okay? That's the yellow arrow along with the dot. On different compasses, it looks different. The compass on your left, it is a black line. On the north end, it has two fluorescent um, indicators, so you can see it in the dark. And the tail has one um, glow-in-the-dark indicator. The one in the middle uh, is just kind of an outline of an arrow. Red for the north end, black for the south end. And the one on the right seems to be like a rectangle with a pointy end to it. Totally red. The one on the left and the one on the far right, notice it also has lines to either side of it, and those lines move with it when you turn the housing. Those will come in handy next month when we use it with a map. <coughs> this month, we're just interested in that painted arrow on the bottom of the housing. When you turn the housing, that painted arrow turns, right? Everybody find that one? That's the one people have the most problems with, but we need that to take a map. And then, of course, we have the direction of travel arrow, which is on the base plate. Wore off my compass on the right, so I had to draw it in with a Sharpie. Um, also, where the direction of travel arrow intersects that dial, where your 360 degrees are, some of your compasses will have a little triangle, or they might have words that say, does anybody have one that has words? Yeah, what's it say? Oh, okay, and for north. That, that could be, yeah, by the way, the orienting arrow on that last slide. This arrow we're talking about that's painted on the bottom points to zero on the die. Okay. So back to this. It might say on your compass, read here. I love it when they come with instructions. It says read here. So when you go to read your bearing, that's where you would read. You would read where the direction of travel arrow intersects your dial. On my pictures for my slides, I put a big blue triangle. So where that blue triangle is, is where we would read our bearing. Does that make sense? Because okay. that's the arrow that says, this is the way I want to go, and that's how we're going to read. Cool. I can make use of this. Thank you, Rich. This is awesome. So where I'm pointing to what I'm talking about is that this is my direction of travel arrow. And you see my dial? This direction of travel arrow connects to that line right there. And that dial, that line intersects my dial. That's where we would read the bearing when it comes time for us to read it. Okay. You don't read over here, you don't read over here. You read right where that intersects your dial. of direction of travel arrows. Uh, the one on the left is kind of like a skeleton arrow painted on the base plate. The one in the middle is this little short arrow. That dial takes up almost the whole base plate, so there's not much room for the direction of travel arrow, but it is there. And the one on the right, they thought one wasn't enough, so they gave us two. Okay, so when I said read the number off the dial where the direction of travel arrow intersects it, don't do that with that compass. All right? 
with that compass, you would read, can you see a little gray spot right there? It's one of the little raised plastic piece. It's a little triangle. That's where you would read. So don't read where the lines, where's my mouse, where the lines come down and intersect. So I'm not fond of that compass because it throws out my pattern here. But just know that you always read in the center. There's no Okay, those are the three arrows. Everybody identify your three arrows? You see them on your compass? We need those three arrows. Okay, so we need all three to take a bearing. So remember when we were working with the, pro with the protractor? The blue line was the direction of travel. You can see where it would be on the compass. The red line was my, what do we call that? The red baseline. The baseline on the compass is what? The magnetic needle, right? The baseline has to be something that will always be in the exact same place when you need to refer to it. And the magnetic needle, in theory, points to magnetic north. There is no such thing. It really is drawn to the magnet magnetic lines, the pull of the earth. Okay? But you can pretty much be sure it's going to be there when, where you need it to be, at zero, unless you're on a picnic table and render ponds apart. Okay, then it won't be there. And the yellow line, what's my yellow line in my diagrams? Yeah, the orienting arrow, the one painted on the bottom. So we'll call that the painted arrow. So my yellow line is the painted arrow. Okay. On my protractor side, the yellow line is really just the edge of the protractor that lines up with zero on the protractor. Okay. So we need the yellow line and the red line to be together, and then at that point we can take our bearing. Right now you're probably thinking, what? In fact, I had a slide in here that said, what? Because right now I'm probably not making any sense. The only sense you need to take away from the presentation so far is that we need a baseline and we need a protractor, and there are three arrows on the compass. Now we need to bring that all together. Think about your compass in a different way. Now, think about your compass as being actually two things. Think about that magnet, magnetic needle as being your baseline. That is something that will always be oriented to north. You can rely on that. You can take a measurement from it. So the magnetic needle is your baseline. Think about the other two arrows as your protractor. The other two arrows turn your compass into the protractor. It gives us the painted arrow, and it gives us the direction of travel. Right? Now, how do we put that all together? These slides are be on the internet, so if you want to review them for your homework, you should be able to get to them. All right, so now let's talk about how to take a bearing, and then we'll talk about how to use a bearing. So how to take a bearing. When would we want to take a bearing? Let's say you are standing up on a ridge line, up high. And in the distance, you see a road. And in a moment, you're going to start walking to that road. But as you walk to the road, you're going to go down into trees and a valley, and you're not going to be able to see the road anymore. But while you're up high on this ridge, and you can see the road, you can take a bearing to it. So then as you start going down into the trees, you'll get all nervous because you can't see the road anymore, but you can see your compass, and your compass is going to tell you which way to go. Remember I said a circle has 360 degrees, and when you're standing in it, you have a choice of 360 degrees, different directions to go in. Once you figure out which direction you want to go in, the compass can help you stay there. The compass can't figure out for you which direction. But once you figure it out, you make the choice, it can keep you going in that direction. And this is how. So I want you to remember the letters P, A, N. P is in red up there, so this is P. To take a bearing, the first thing you do is you point the compass, holding it correctly, where you want to go. So if I wanted to go to that wall over there, I would point my compass with my body, holding it correctly, in the direction I want to go in. That's key. 
That one good? This is the hard A, so we'll come back to it. Here's N. Let's jump ahead to N, because N's an easy one. Once you get your compass aligned correctly, that's what A stands for, then you read the number. Okay. So the first step is point the compass. Let's say I'm going to pretend I'm going to that wall, because it looks that way. Oh, you're good, Mackenzie. Um, so point the compass. We're going to do some alignment. I'm going to come back to the A. But once it's aligned, the alignment, I'm going to read right there. Okay, so P is easy, as long as you hold it correctly. A, we'll come back to that. N is easy, because you're going to read the number right there. Right? Now let's do the hard work. A. Align. A stands for align. So notice my compass right now. It's pointing to the road. But look at the two arrows inside the housing. We've got the magnetic needle, which is my baseline. It's always going to be pointing to magnetic north. And then I got that painted line on the bottom, right? What we're going to do, some people call it box the needle. We're going to take the yellow one, which is painted on the bottom, we're going to turn the housing until the yellow one is completely underneath the floating magnetic needle. So we are going to align the orienting arrow, which is the one that's painted, to the magnetic needle, that's the one floating, by turning the compass housing. She's good. Okay, so that's Mackenzie up there. Um, so, let me start out this way. This is my floating needle, right here, my magnetic needle. This is my orienting arrow and my awesome compass tool here. I'm going to turn this housing, I have to hold my mag magnetic needle in place. I'm going to turn the housing until I have boxed, and I think they call it box when you're your, mag your orienting arrow is kind of like a shadow around your magnetic needle, you've boxed it. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? So those of you who have a compass, can you do that? So right now, whichever way north is, which way is north? That way? Okay, so turn your housing so that the painted needle is directly underneath the magnetic. And right now you all are pointing forward, so your direction of travel is this way, right? Direction of travel is this way, north is that way. What bearing are you reading? 120? Wow, that's what the slides were made up to say. That's pretty cool. Did everybody get about 120? 110? Okay, I'm hearing 110, 120, but you know what? I'm not hearing 75 or 30. So you're all in the same ballpark. And compass is not accurate. You're not going to go to the moon with this. You'll miss. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? So you now know how to take a bearing. P stands for point. So I'm going to point my whole base plate, my whole compass, my body with it. I'm going to point to where I want to go. And then A stands for a line. And what are the two things you're aligning? Right, the magnetic needle and the orienting needle by doing what? Turning the, yeah, moving it, moving this round thing, moving the housing, right? That's important, those three parts are important. You have to align the orienting arrow to the magnetic needle by Turning the housing, okay? You don't align them by turning your body, because if you turn in your body, what have you just lost? Your direction of travel, right? Okay, good. You guys now know how to take a bearing. Was that easy? So where's the protra protractor part? The protractor part is when I do this. That's aligning up the protractor with the baseline reading the 
number is just reading clockwise to read the number off the compass. So it's a protractor. Now we know why it's called the protractor compass. Questions? Comments? Does that kind of make sense? Okay. So read the number. We got that. Here's your summary. So if you got a handout, this summary is on the handout. Were there enough handouts? Okay, if there were not enough handouts, then later on you can give me your email address, or I can give you mine, that would be better. And you can um, email me and I'll send you a copy. Okay. Now that we have a bearing, you might want to use it. So, um, a minute ago I had the scenario of we were up on a ridge, we saw the road, we took a bearing to it. By the way, when you walk from the ridge to the road, do you walk like this? Now you're going to hit something, right? Like a tree. So what you do is you, you use this to identify something off in the distance. And then you put the compass down and you walk to that thing that you identify. A tree, a rock, a whatever. Then when you get there, you pick it up again and you do this part. You use the bearing. You know the bearing is 120. You realign yourself back onto that bearing, and you'll eventually get to the road. Because they say when you're lost, how do we walk? In circles. They say when you, we're lost, we walk in circles. So what the compass does, remember I said in the beginning, the compass will help keep you on a path. And when you fall off it, you can use the bearing to get back on the compass. So when I say to use a bearing, after I got the slides all made up, it dawned on me, maybe I should say follow the bearing. Because now we have the number, and we want to put it to good use, so we want to follow that bearing. So in this scenario, I say a friend gives you a bearing, and you want to head in that direction. So let's say somebody gives you the bearing of 120 degrees, which is why I thought it was funny that your readings came up 120 degrees. The first thing you need to do is... Uh, Right now, all your compasses are probably aligned to 120, right? So do me a favor, mess them up. Take your housing and mess it up. Turn your housing so that those two arrows aren't aligned anymore. Right. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is hold your compass correctly. And you're going to turn the compass housing until you get the 120 at the read here point. So we need to... Don't worry about lining up the two arrows at this point. All you're doing is turning the housing until the number is at the read here point. So my example is 120 degrees. So we need, I'll use this thing. We need 120 degrees lined up right there. I tend not to use this because my hands shake normally. So this is what you get when I point. Okay, sorry about that. But it's faster than trying to find my mouse cursor. So right there, we want 120 degrees. So don't worry about lining up the two arrows, but turn the housing until you get 120 degrees at the read here point. Okay. By the way, when we took a bearing a little while ago, what were the three letters? Pan, P-A-N. Now that we're using the bearing, reverse the letters. N-A-P, so now you need to go take a nap. Right? So the, that's where we're starting here. We're starting with N. N means dial in the number. And you do that by turning the compass housing until the number is at the read here marker. Guess what? We're going to come back to A. Oops. Let's do P. P is really easy because after you do A, your compass and you are pointed in the direction you need to go in. So you just go in that direction because your compass is pointing in the direction you need to go in. So do you agree that N is easy? Just dial in the number. Everybody know where we're dialing it into? P is easy. You're just going to walk in the direction you're pointing. So it's that darn A that is a pain and confuses the heck out of everybody. So let's talk about A. A, 
is align the orienting arrow to the magnetic needle. Oh wait, you know how to do that part. It's nothing new there, right? Ah. By turning you. Yeah, not the housing. Because if you turn the housing, what happens to your number? Closed, right? So you got to dial in your 120. That's the number part. Then you have to do the alignment by doing this, holding your compass and going, turning you and the compass together. So watch the arrows inside this box. This little guy here is going to turn. Two arrows are closer. Oh, they're closer. There he is. So that's the direction he would walk in. Does that make sense? So it's dial in the number, do the alignment, align those same two arrows together, but what's confusing is what do you, how do you do the alignment? And in this case, you do the alignment by turning your whole body, right? And it's easy to remember that because if you mess it up and you go like this and start turning that dial, you're not going in the direction of 120 anymore, right? 120 has to be at the read me point. Questions? Jokes about like animation? <laughs> That's the last slide is a bear to make. And then P is just walk in the direction, right? So N is number, A is a line, and P is point. Just go, go the way it's pointing. P is very easy. And here's the sum. And that's on the handout. Okay. <clears throat> so right now, here we are all together in the room, and it seems to make sense. Here's a way to help solidify it. Go home and play. Get a friend and play. My partner and I call this playing pan and nap. What we do is we'll go canoeing or we'll go hiking or something, and then we sit down to have our break. And while we're taking a break, one of us will close our eyes. We're sitting next to each other. One of us will close our eyes, and the other person will take the compass, and they'll look at something. So let's pretend I'm going to look at Jackson, and I take a bearing to Jackson. Then I take the compass housing, which has the bearing on it, and I mess up the housing. I turn it all around, and I give it to my partner, and I tell her 115. And she has to figure out what I was looking at along that path of 115. And then, once she figures it out, like, it'll be something, what's your name? Ed? It'll go something like this. She'll go, you're looking at Ed? Nope. You're looking at, what's your name there? Pat Patty? Looking at Patty? Nope. And it's like, you're looking at Jackson? Yes, that's it. Because Ed, Patty, and Jackson are all on the same line. Right? And I'm looking at a bearing, so it could be any one of those things. Right? Just be nice to your friend when you do this. Don't do it like a couple of my friends. They were like, naming all the things along this path. And I'm like, no! Finally she gives up and says, I have no idea what it is. And the other person says, it's that dandelion. <laughs> like, right there. So be nice. And then, you can switch. The person who took the bearing can close her eyes. The other person can now take a bearing off to a ridge. Maybe that bearing's 75 degrees. And then give it to the person who closes their eyes and they have to figure out what you're looking at. It's a way to practice it and reinforce it in your mind. See, that kind of makes sense? It's a fun way to do it. Let's try it right now. Uh, let's see. I, I'm just going to pretend I took a bearing to 75. So you guys have to use that bearing. See, if standing up would be a good thing to do, right? Because you're going to have to turn your body. So maybe you'll feel uncomfortable because if you pick wrong direction, you can just copy your neighbor. So dial in the number 75, align the two arrows, I think your compass goes like this, this is your direction to travel here, because this is a sighting, usually it's sighting.
Yes, we have to use the little black. <laughs>
his way, that he has to go around, that and he has to step to the side, that he's still on the same bearing. But is he going to get to the tree? No, because he's now on a different path. Same bearing, same direction, but he stepped aside. So it's not a good idea to take a bearing to a thing. It's better to take it to a line, like a road, ridge line, a line of trees, a river, something long. So if something is in your path, and you have to step to the side, will you still get to the road? Yes. Okay. So it's not a good idea to take a bearing to a point. It's a good idea to take a bearing to something that forms a line. You'll have a better chance of hitting it. Which then brings me back to my homework that I gave you. Because in the homework, I said, first, second person closes their eyes, first person takes a bearing to Jackson. I just took a bearing to a point. And then the second person tries to figure out what I was looking at. Well, that second person is sitting next to me. Or in this case, I, I give the direction that the second person should stand where the first person was standing. So my assumption here with the homework is that you're, you're in the exact same location as the person who took the bearing when you go to use the bearing. So you were looking on the same general path. Right? So please don't take my homework and read it as I'm telling you to take a bearing to a point because that's a very, very bad thing. It's almost impossible to hit a point with a compass. Aim for something long, like a wall, a road, a ridge, a river. Okay? What questions do you guys have? Yes? Did you say you were going to put the things that you do on the web somewhere? Yes. Um, I asked for them to be put up this afternoon, the slides you're talking about. And uh, you know, on the chapter's website, it announces this workshop. At the bottom of it, it says PowerPoint slides for tonight's workshop are here. When I tested it, uh, they had, seemed to have a glitch in it. And I let the webmaster know she was going to look into it. But that's the concept, is that the slides are going to be available there. Okay. So I highly recommend you just go out and practice it. Go play pan and nap with a friend. And remember, point align number for taking a bearing. And when you do the alignment, what do you turn? You turn the housing. When you're looking for the number, you're turning the housing because by turning it, you're going to put the number at the read here point. When you go to, sorry, when you go to take use a bearing, when you go to use a bearing, God is. What's the acronym when you go to use the bearing? Now, number, align, and then where you're pointed is where you need to go. Now, with that alignment, what do you turn? Do you turn the housing? No, you turn your whole body, right? Because if you turn the housing, you've lost your number. Okay? So if you got a handout, the key things off this presentation are in the handout, like nap, point, uh, hand and nap. If you uh, didn't get a handout and you'd like one, I'd be glad to give you my email address. Yeah. Uh, well, the, okay. the, the bubble doesn't come with it. When you buy a brand new compass, the, we, there should be no bubble in it. If you buy a compass and there's a bubble in it, they should be paying you to take the compass. Okay? Um, the, the bubble develops over time. And as long as the bubble doesn't interfere with the magnetic needle, you can still use it with the bubble. So when the bubble gets bigger and interferes with the needle, then you have a, you have a problem. Some of you have compasses like this that has a mirror. Um, it's not so that you can check your hair. Um, it's a sighting compass. So what you do is you're sighting through that notch like on a gun. You're sighting through the notch on the top. And the mirror is so that it reflects down so you can read the dial kind of backwards. So you, this one you'd hold up like this. You're sighting to, to kind of get a better accuracy. And then you're reading down below. Um, and your direction of travel arrow 
is represented by the line that's in the mirror. There's a black line in the mirror. Yeah. Question? Other questions? Yes? Cheap one. If you don't, the question was, if you don't have a compass, what's the best compass to get? I highly recommend you get the cheapest one you can find, price-wise. Like a, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sure it's not pronounced the way I'm going to. That's a good company right there. Sunto? Sunto? Or what's the other one that starts with S? Silva. Silva. Those two you find at EMS, wherever. Andrew Mountain, Dick, all those places. Um, just make sure the housing turns, right? If the housing doesn't turn, you can't take a bearing. And you'll see compasses they sell with the housing, with the numbers on it, with the painted arrow, but the housing doesn't turn. I, like I said, I think they're just selling it for the magnetic needle and they uh, assume you're not gonna take a bearing with it. So that's it, I would just get the cheapest compass you can get that the housing turns on and has all the arrows that we talked about. I haven't seen any non-liquid. What else is there? Yep, this is liquid. And this is um, actually bring this uh, on March. Because this compass actually, oh, not this one. Oh, it does. Do. Oh, interesting. This compass, this compass actually, um, The compass that I have in my hand right here allows you, see that painted arrow? It points to what on this extra scale on the inside of the compass? Can you see? Zero. It points to zero right there. That painted arrow points to zero on this extra scale in the center. And that extra scale is labeled W deck and E deck, which stands for declination. Yeah. You can actually take some compasses and offset that painted arrow from zero which then adjusts your compass to declination. And that's what we get to talk about in March. Okay, so March we'll talk about declination. Other questions? Yes? Uh, you talked about the angle of incline. Yeah. I don't know where that is. Not all compasses have it. Can I grow your compass back? Uh, yep. I've got the sign. Uh, see how this compass has three arrows on the inside? It's got that little, little, little black one right there. If your compass has that extra little black arrow in the center, it can measure, thank you, Jackson, it can measure incline of the hill. I had one with it. I thought it was really cool when I bought it. I never used it. I think it's a good selling point. So I wouldn't pay extra for it. Because believe me, when you think you're going straight up, it's still only about six degrees <laughs> that you're hiking. I've been given the high sign um, to wrap it up, so thank you all very much. I hope it's been useful. Yes. Um,